Hello there people, this is Christian and welcome back to my computer and Fusion for 16 and this shape uh, which is not in any way any perfect model, it's slightly interesting this is from a question on the Facebook group Fusion 360 users uh, the question was, uh, I'd like to talk about that later right away uh, the question was if there's any way to extend the faces of this spiral into the cylinder in the middle and I don't know if there is, there might be uh, but when I look at this, I prefer a totally different workflow, which has nothing to do with what we've seen. It would, it would end up something like this on the screen. But I will not start here. I would start slightly differently. And that's the thing, and I see some questions sometimes. People are, uh, call it isolating the question. Oh, I just don't know how to move his face here. And yes, we might be able to answer that question, but sometimes there are better ways or s different ways to do workflow. So, uh, we're going to end up with something like, like this. This is like an auger bit or something like uh, It's not like uh, it really would be manufactured, but okay, yeah, it works. So, let's get it going and we start a new design. A uh, new component. Uh, cone. Helix, let's call it that. Uh, I'm going to use surface tools later to create this, but first off, I like to start with a sketch uh, from the front, so I'm going to do it. And uh, looking at this, so my plan is to, I need to somehow find a cylinder shape, and I think is, uh, this is going to stand this, we have a rectangle here, we're going to have a rectangle up here, so I just to know what's going on, I'm going to sketch things, and control things as always, fully parametric. Let's start with the center line. Let's do this thing uh, 100 millimeter high. I'm gonna make a square, let's make that construction, a rectangle, and it's gonna be something like this. We're gonna have a rectangle here. We know that the two inner lines here should be collinear. And I know that this point here should be horizontal to this. This is when we are top, this is total height, and this should be horizontal to that. And uh, this line should be equal to that because we need to be the same size. Okay, I'm starting to do some dimensions, D for dimensions. Center line and this here, so this is going to be the diameter of a mid cylinder. Let's do it uh, 8 millimeters. And we're going to do uh, the dimension of where the, uh, at the bottom of a helix. Let's do the 25. And let's make one, move. And move dimensions where we can see them slightly better. And dimension center line to here. Uh, 120, yeah, and dimension the what we might call the thickness. Uh, let's do that four millimeters, and as usual, so uh, centric, centric dimensions have a tendency to jump around when you don't want them to jump around, and like that. And we should have let's open up and have a check. And uh, we have a fully defined sketch. <coughs> Sorry about that. So, this here is like uh, the thing. My base sketch, I normally try to rename the sketches, know what I'm doing, but I will not do that today. I'm just going to work for the workflow, and I will finish the sketch. This is just to know where things are, so if you edit this sketch, I'm going to now uh, project that into the next sketches I'm going to do. And by doing that, I can reuse, and so if I edit this sketch, things change down downstream, down the timeline. Uh, sketch, let's do it from the top. We need to project some things. I want to project the inner cylinder here. We're going to use circle. We're going to use that for our cylinder. I'm going to make a line from here straight out. And just for convenience, let's project in uh, this point like that. Make a coincidence between uh, that one and that one. One like that. So this is the end of our uh, little sweep so with this line we're going to use for sweep later like that and now we need to get a path for a sweep so let's do that we're going to create a sketch from the front so this is going to be my profile the first line i did down here uh of a, of a second sketch and we're going to do a line from here straight up we're going to use that as our path we need some projections so we're going to put that corner and that corner i'm going to make now horizontal between this and this my plan is to do a helix sweep, and the helix sweep is going to be one of the surfaces. So let's go back here. I can do top surface or bottom surface for ease. I'm going to do the bottom surface now. 
So I'm going to sweep this so the path length need to be to the bottom up here. And then I need the cone to trim things and I've printed in the two corners here. So I'm going to make a line. We're working from the bottom every time like that. So that should be everything we need. Let's finish the line and finish sketch. And can hide our first sketch for now. We are going to make a sweep. S in the keyboard. Start typing sweep, find our surface sweep. We can switch over to surface tool, make it easy to see things. Uh, profile, you have a little line here. Path, uh, this one here. And now we're going to do some twists. Uh, let's see, in our original picture we have one, two, three twists. So let's do that. Uh, 360, oops, uh, times three. And that is the wrong direction, so let's do that in negative like uh, that and we're gonna do we can do the menus we're gonna do a uh, revolve on so we create the cone so we, the profile is this the axis is the center axis like that let's do trimming select the cone as our tool trim away the outside of the helix and open the bodies the cone has done its job so let's do a remove right click the body and select remove so we get out of the way and like that we have something nice to look at and uh, now uh, we need to make a second copy of this s move i prefer not to use move commands normally I, you can do a rectangular pattern if you want to do that but i'm going to use move this time uh, this body make sure to create a copy uh, select translate translate is good because you can use that in parametric ways so you can reuse it you can edit the dimension or you can use the parameter for dimension. So that's going to go up slightly and with the set distance there. So that's going to be four. So it lines up with my sketch there. Yes, thank you. Hit OK. Hide all the sketches. Makes the next command a little bit easier. Create a loft. And now we're going to select one edge at one body, edge of another body. Uh, sometimes we can do chain selection. I prefer to do it by hand. I notice sometimes fusion get really confused if you're too eager to select too much things. So I'm going to work my way through things. Edge by edge. And by doing it on that one, we should have all the edges. Hit OK. And look, we have made something fun here. Let's select everything and stitch it together. Turn on our sketches again. Turn on the second sketch. We're going to do go back to solid. We're going to do extrude. Now we go extrude. Yes, it knows what we want to extrude. Put it profile there. Uh, distance to object. And I'm going to do a top horizontal line and join. And hide all the sketches. And by doing that, we have created this interesting helix loop. Uh, the thing, the parameters of this, of course, that is, it's uh, always perpendicular out from the center axis or a cylinder in the middle and it looks nicely so that's how i would do it and this is now possible to go back and change maybe it's supposed to be 80 millimeters see if this works or if this crashes no it works you can play around the only thing i didn't do parametric was uh, you need to use a parameter if you're going to use the thickness here was four that is not translated right now to the move command you can put it in a parameter to do that you can replace a parameter in here directly or you can use uh, modify uh, use a parameter change parameters and uh, so that's a short description on the workload i would use to create this part hope it could be useful for someone and see you around goodbye